Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Rhett. And I'm Rhett. Ha, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm Link. I think you got yourself. <laughs> Wait, no, I didn't. I fooled you, man. Well, is that why we introduce ourselves at the beginning of the podcast? It would so have that fooled we, me. We know who we are. No, see, or is it for them? Yeah, I would have gotten for the you listener. If you can't get me, if I go first, this is a fundamental misunderstanding. If I said, "Welcome to Ear Biscuits," I'm Link. I would have gotten you, but I'd already said my name. So you saying right. that you're Rhett is getting no one. You know what? I'll Except get the mythical beasts. I'll get you next week. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna get you. There's nothing you can do to prepare. Uh, well, now I know that you're gonna do it. I am prepared. I'll still get you. Okay. I'll still get you. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're asking the question, what is the greatest game show of all time? At least uh, according to me and separately, but equally according to Link. Oh, that's funny. Don't say something's <laughs> funny. Either laugh or don't, but don't say that's yeah, we, funny. We have ranked. It's so insulting. We have ranked our top five game shows. Uh, and we and haven't made, looked at each other's lists. And made a list of honorable mentions because it wasn't necessarily that easy uh, to do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through that, compare notes. Now, uh, and, and can I just say that, you, you may say, oh, who cares about game shows? I don't even know why I'm listening to this, but I will, I will say I'm personally offended because this is a deeply personal topic for me. Like, uh, as I think will become clear very quickly when I go through my list, um, Game shows are tied in not only to my psyche, and not only to, by the way, what we do for a living now in terms of formatting Good Mythical Morning. I think there's a lot that we don't, we haven't plumbed the depths, maybe we will today, of how game, the game show culture and our experiences with it have shaped Good Mythical Morning. But even if we don't get to it, it is a fact. Mm. But even more importantly, there's a certain part of my childhood, I, actually a couple of eras in my childhood that were that are deeply associated with, with game shows. Well, and I also think it will be interesting because my theory is that your criteria for what makes a good game show is probably different than, than mine. Uh, and we can just, and, and maybe there ends up being some crossover because of that, maybe not. Or maybe we'll just fight. Um, so I am excited about this discussion. We do wanna let you know that we are coming your way, if you happen to be in one of the following places on the following dates, uh, yes, again, this uh, musical comedy tour that we're doing right now, which is not the tour of mythicality, people are still calling it that. The tour of mythicality was a distinct thing that was related to the first book. This is a musical concert experience that uh, we're having Britton Buchanan, Link's cousin from The Voice opening up for us and anecdotal evidence as told to us by mythical beasts that we met while on tour last time have told us that they prefer this show to the tour of mythicality. So I would say eight out of 10, nine out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10. Yeah, there was a couple prefer of people, it. There was a couple of people who said- 10 out of 10 that, dentists prefer. Yeah. Especially if you're a dentist, you should Rhett come. Link live concert in concert versus the tour of mythicality. Uh, so but, if you like that, you'll love this. And again, if you didn't like it, you'll love this. Uh, we're going to be in Las Vegas on Friday, June 21st. We're going to be in Salt Lake City on June 22nd. We're going to be in Denver, Colorado on June 23rd. We're going to be in Milwaukee on June 25th. Indianapolis, June 26th. Detroit on June 27th. Omaha on June 29th, and Minneapolis on June 30th. Come out and see us. And if you know someone who's in these areas, tell them to come out and see us. Cuz that's what we run into. I, I what we what we have found is every time we're visiting a town and we're walking around before a show or after a show or whatever, uh, people are like, "Rhett and Link, what are you doing here?" And we're like, "Well, we got a show." And they're like, "What?" Or oh, we had a show. That's even sadder. Yeah, so we're letting you know now. So you can let them know now. Go to rhettandlinklive.com to get your ticks. Um, get your ticks. You got something for me before we get into yeah, game I, shows? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I'm feeling not a little bit jittery uh, because I am. Does that mean not jittery or a lot jittery? I'm a lot jittery. Okay. I am on uh, sort of the, the second half of day two of, and I'm not gonna say the brand because I've, I haven't finished this yet so I'm not in the mood for an endorsement. I don't know if this is gonna be something that I will then recommend to other people. 
but I, I you know, I like to try new things and experiment with new things, and I'm kind of into the whole like. This is a if this is illegal, we should talk off mic. <laughs> it's not illegal. I'm into the whole anti aging thing, and you know, I've been doing the intermittent fasting thing for uh, almost two months now. So Which is basically eating for an eight hour period and then not eating for a sixteen hour period. Super, actually, a lot of people here are doing it at the office. Like it's really popular. Um, if that makes you feel better about town. it. Sure. It actually, no, so here's, here's what I would say. I can give at Group least think. a two month in endorsement of intermittent fasting has radically transformed some things about my body. And I'm not talking about like body shape. I'm talking about like uh, inflammation. Like I got like little spots of like psoriasis that pop up. Those have dwindled. I I have like this, this recurrent sort of like un, um, like, unpredictable bowel reactions to things, you know, like if we eat something weird on the show or if we eat something really spicy, that has stabilized. And all the the five times that I've had ch hot chicken in the past couple of weeks, absolutely no negative effects from it. I Yeah. I, I have to believe that this been is freed, somewhat related. You've been freed up to say yes every single time that you're remotely presented with the opportunity to sample a hot chicken. Listen, and, and like that, we're that walking means down the a street lot to me. And that you means just stop. You said, I'll meet up with you later. I'm gonna be in this hot chicken place that we just happen to stumble on, even though we've just eaten lunch. And getting like the hottest one. Still, no effect. And, and this is, again, this is not the thing that you're not endorsing. This is intermittent fasting, this is just, which means you're waking up in the morning, you're not eating breakfast. You eat at, you, you, you pick an eight hour, there's different. I'm doing the 16 and eight, so basically, I wake up in the morning, I don't eat until noon, and then I don't eat after eight o'clock. And I'm, and basically, after I'm eight o'clock would be easy, but I, I don't think I could wait until noon to eat. Well, I get it wasn't a, th I, I was never like a, I don't wake up hungry, so that wasn't a big deal for me. What about when you, if you go to the gym and then afterward, aren't you starving? Uh, and you yeah, gotta build muscle, man. Yeah, but you adjust pretty, pretty quickly to that. Uh, and it doesn't, you drink, right? You drink drink water, yeah. just water. Yeah, I and mean, you have tea. You just and you can. T there's some people who are really like really sticklers, and, uh, or who like you can have like some like BCAAs, like you know branched chain amino acids and stuff like that. That, that, that they don't really hit the ca the calorie. Okay, you're losing me. That kind of ahead. thing for me. That's really complicated because I don't want to be the dad who doesn't eat dinner. You know what I'm saying? So this way I can still eat dinner, which makes that's me a, not a weird a great person. movie though. <laughs> the dad who would not eat dinner. It's in black and white, but um, you get used to that after like the opening scene, which is amazing. It's the dad and he's at the table, but he's not eating dinner. Right, but he's present. Everybody else is there eating dinner. He just watches you as you eat. Yeah, it's and it's it was hilarious. It's better they, than just like watching TV while you eat. They hated him, they um, hated him. But That's the start of the so character to, arc. So you have a difficult time in the morning. Late at night, that is my time. That's what's been difficult to me is I am a late night snacker and so stopping eating basically at eight o'clock essentially after dinner, that has been a difficult adjustment to me so I go to bed hungry. But you haven't I, you haven't even gotten to the no, thing. But the thing that I am trying now is this thing, it's called the fasting mimicking diet that uh, these professors or a professor at USC like partnered with some anti-aging Institute and they came up, they formulated this diet. If that so makes you feel better about it's it. It's a five, it does. Well, it's not just some hack, it's like scientific from a legitimate <laughs> establishment. They ba they formulated a ULCA. diet. ULCA, oh, that, nope. That, that tricks your body into thinking that it is fasting. So when you fast, all this stuff happens. Like all the science is showing right now that during a period of fasting, there's like all these things that are happening to your body and organ shrinking and cell renewal and stuff like that, that they're beginning, the research is beginning to kind of line up that this is a really healthy thing for people to do. Um, but fasting just cold turkey uh, is a difficult thing to do and also also probably, I don't really know all the reasons why they, they want you to have a little bit of calories but not go cold turkey, but I think that it's just an easier transition for people. I like systems like that I can just get a box of food yeah, yeah. and just be like, I don't have to think about this. I literally look at a picture, like a little printout. I and it's do like, like that. You got, you have to eat the three things from, you get a little box for every day. Yes. Eat these three things at breakfast, these three things at lunch, these three things in the afternoon. Yeah, preschooler so, could do it. But the things you that I'm eating it. are like, a. A bar, 
And I'm not doing the fasting mimicking and the intermittent fasting because I have to keep up with the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just so you know. You had to switch gears, had to all, switch tracks. All that to say that it's not enough food. Well, I looked over your shoulder yesterday and you were finishing a bowl of like juice with seeds in it. It's what it looked like to me. Soup. I just put it. I put it in <laughs> a. Uh, I put it, it in. It didn't a, look uh, like soup, man. It was jelly-like. Well, it, the reason it, it, the reason you interpreted it as a drink is because I had it in a mason jar, but it was minestrone. <laughs> okay. It wasn't. It wasn't necessarily good minestrone. Actually, it tasted excellent in the state that I was in. But yeah. um, you're basically doing a a hospital recovery mimic diet, like when you know if you're recovering from something and then they have put you on this weird bland, watery diet Well, and there's packs of, the reason that a lot of people, including you, wouldn't be able to do this is that one of the things that you get twice a day is a pack of olives. Oh, God. And actually, I've never had so much fun with a pack of olives. What have you been doing with it? Well, just eating it, believe it or not. And it's like six olives. And it makes, I mean, I already like olives, but when you're barely eating anything, a package of six olives is heavenly. I mean, I might just have I would little small the, packs of olives from pit. here on out. You eat the pit? If you're that no, hungry. They're de pitted. Or they're yeah, pitted. because they're afraid that you'll eat it. I mean, here's the thing about fasting. I think it goes back to like hunter gatherer type situation where you're like, you know, you get desperate to find some food. You're like hunting. You're out there and you're like your organs are shrinking and your body's getting sinewy and you're like you're like pulling back your bowstring and trying to trying to get a deer, man, well, that and is, you know what? That, and you're desperate. But that is the science behind it, is that people yeah. say that, and again, I I don't know, I haven't read enough about this to make any endorsements or say what's true and what's not true. But Why read think, about it when you can eat about it? When you it. can just do it. The thinking of, behind the whole fasting thing is that humans traditionally, like back in those hunter-gatherer days, it you're wasn't like, you, you, didn't, you didn't have. Rolling over and stuffing your face. You didn't have something. three square meals per day. You right. ate when there it was plentiful. That's one of the reasons we have such a, uh, we abuse like fats and sugars because it wasn't often Instinct. that you came across yeah. fats and sugars. And if you came across a, ca a, calor a calorie dense thing, you, you ate it. Capitalized, buddy. But now we're just surrounded by calorie dense things and so we're all out of whack. Anyway. I, but my problem, I think the risk with this, with the fasting is that you might find yourself attacking and eating things. You better watch out. Like if you tried to eat Jade, I would kill you. <laughs> like I would not hesitate. It, it would be instinctive. Again, it would be like one of those, I'm not it would gonna be like a hunter gatherer um, fight to the death. Here's, would you I, eat my dog? I can make a promise. Don't eat my dog. I am not going to like kill. Like a cartoon. I'm You're not like, gonna kill your dog. dog in the next, Four days looks like a cooked turkey. But you know, I will not kill your dog. Eat your own dog, man. In in, th in these circumstances, but in the apocalypse, okay. in desperate times, if I've already eaten uh, someone else's dog, and the only thing left is your dog and my dog, I'll probably eat your dog. Yeah, I think in an ap apocalyptic situation, the dogs that you want to keep around are like the ones that are like ferocious. You don't want to keep around the, like the emotional support dogs. <laughs> it's like I think, I think they become like <laughs> emotional support dogs are the first things that become like um, hunger support dogs. <laughs> right. Well, there's. I, I don't watch The Walking Dead anymore, but there's not a dog in that show, right? Well, was there a dog? There's a lot of. There's a lot of union stipulations when you bring in the dogs yeah, and the kids. Yeah, right. I think that's why they started killing the kids too. But Early on they killed the kids. I'll tell you right now. Because uh, they have to bring in tutors and stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm jittery. I can only imagine how bad you, your, your shakes, I think I probably have equal shakes to you right now. I'm steady as a, as a painter. Why are you moving so much then? I'm just For those of you listening, we're holding our hands next to each other. Seeing who's shakier. It's pretty even right now. Um, anyway, I'll report back and let you know how I feel at, at the end of the week. Why not at the end of this episode? Let's just contain it right <laughs> okay, here. Yeah. Well, if I'll still be. Interest. I'll still be on day two. All right. So let's get into our our game show list. Um, now that I've I've thoroughly picked apart your um, your minestrone diet. <laughs> but first, 
we wanna let you know that you can grab uh, the hat that Link is wearing or at least one very much like it at mythical.store. These mugs are also there. The, um, well, nothing else that you're wearing currently or that I'm wearing is available there, but there's a lot of stuff available. Uh, the pen? Well, that pen, you gotta be in the Mythical Society to get that pen. That's right. Um, Mythical.store for all your mythical needs. I think Feldman was just pointing at his nipple. It's like. Oh, no, well, the shirt you're wearing. Nope. No. Well, listen, we'll sell anything if we can, so just go over there and find whatever it is now. Lots of stuff. Mythical.store, rep your boys. Entertainment supportage happening. Go for it. Go for it and come back full. Kind of like Rhett, that's at the end of an eight hours of eating. Right. Um, give me your uh, phil <laughs> philosophy <laughs> of how you chose these. Um, I, so I what made was my your guiding principle. My guiding principle for my top five game shows of all time was um, enjoyment factor coupled with, um, I just think sentimental slash personal connection. Um, so, d do you want to just you want to just start? Uh, yeah. Well, let, I'm gonna let me. I'm gonna. I'm. I want to give. Okay, that's your. Philosophy. I have some honorable mentions. Yeah, I should ask. What's What's your philosophy? Um, Sorry, I did, I should have asked. That. And the, and this is that's that's what polite people would have done. And okay, because I figured that it had to do because you talk about game shows a lot, especially like when you were a kid watching. Interestingly, watching game shows and not watching any movies that everyone else on earth was watching, which if you were wondering why Link didn't see Back to the Future, Top Gun, Ghostbusters, Goonies, fill in the blank, every single movie that you saw when you were a child, he was watching game shows. Well, I was watching, no, I was watching. And Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> yeah, my mom and I watched Entertainment Tonight every single night at uh, 7.30, I guess it was. Maybe seven o'clock. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a point where during the summer, mom would drop me off at Nana and Papa's house and Nana just worked like a few blocks away as a dental assistant. No one was watching me, but Nana would come in at, at lunch, like she could leave the dental office and come home and like make lunch for me and her and then Papa, who was police officer, or chief of police, he would also come home. Really? Which meant he'd come home and we'd eat lunch together. So, and then uh, she would be home pretty early in the afternoon. I don't know how that happened, but the dental stuff kind of slowed down around 3.30, it, it kind of like school or something. I don't know. Really? So, um, but in the mornings, I would go, I would, I would watch the USA Network and they would just have syndicated game shows. Like they, from years earlier. So right. like from the, so it, I mean it was the late 80s when I was watching these game shows but they were from the early 80s or 70s and uh, I would watch reruns of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson right when I would get there on USA. Like right. that's how I watched Johnny Carson every single day like learned all of his bits and everything about that. So those are all well, rerun, reruns from the 70s. But in that, in his, sh but at the time, his show was on at night. At night, every night. Yeah, was, which I didn't stay up and watch as like a, you know, a, a, an upper grade schooler. And you, of course, because we were friends with Ben. Yeah. Ben, he would stay up. He would stay if if you spent the night at Ben's house, you stayed up and you watched Johnny Carson. Yeah, because Ben just had the, those kinds of tastes. I never spent the night at Ben's house, by the way. Really? Never once. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you guys were that much, you were a lot closer than we were. It's yeah. like, um, so yeah, I would hear about Johnny Carson and Letterman, he also liked Letterman. But yeah, I watched the older Johnny Carsons because they were syndicated on USA Network and when those were done, the game shows would begin for like, there were, I mean, probably at least three hours of game shows, so like six game shows. Okay. Some of them made my list, some of them made my honorable yeah, you mention. you shouldn't mention, mention any of them because then but that's, you um, might know what. But I don't that, wanna know your list yet. That's special to me. And so, then, so, so, but that, your awareness of game so shows whole and your summer, attachment are, are related yeah, to that. related to that summer. Whereas I think that my, my experience with game shows is probably, um, uh, I think it represents most people's interaction with game shows in that I watched them when they came on 
in prime time or in the afternoon or whatever. I saw those reruns, but I think mo my list is generated. It comes from the game shows that I actually enjoyed personally and with my family. And I think that the ones that, I just kinda noticed this after I compiled my list, the ones that I had put as my top five, the thing that I value the most about game shows is the play along ability. Okay. And uh, it's interesting because I think it would. I value, some, I think that. And I would say that you don't value I that value, as much as I do. I don't, I value something else more and I, I learned it from looking at my own list only after I'd made it. So let's start with your number five. I have honorable mentions. Maybe they're on your list. Number five, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is one of the most, the longest running game shows in history. Of course it is the, um, the, the nightly follow up to Jeopardy. I don't, why am I saying this like you don't already know? <laughs> Who wouldn't know this stuff? Uh, potentially the or potentially the most popular game show of all time. Uh, if not tied with a couple other ones that might have made our lists. Um, I mean, it has all the ingredients, right? It's got a charismatic, funny host. It's got a very, it has Vanna White. So it, so it has the, it has the sex appeal. Oh yeah. Of a, from Myrtle a Beach. woman from Myrtle Beach. South Carolina. Uh, I wonder what dress she's gonna wear today. Right. And I bet there's sequins all over her dressing room. I bet you you couldn't vacuum them up if you wanted to. It's like glitter. It's not, no, no, sequins are way better than glitter. But for her, I'm just saying they're like deeply ingrained. I bet she has sequins on her skin I permanently, think she like had, scales I on a fish. I think she had them attached at some point. Right. I think Vanna White skin is sequin. So if something rips, there's still sequin under there. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, it has a very high play, play along ability factor. Yeah. Uh, and accessibility. And it's very accessible. The rules are really easy to understand. You gotta know English and words. And everyone thinks that they can do it. Unlike right. Jeopardy. Right. Uh, every, Jeopardy's interesting. Every, I'm we'll, sure we'll, we'll get we'll to We'll talk Jeopardy. about Jeopardy. Uh, but anyway, I and of course, I, it, at one point, so Pat Sajak of course was a, a weatherman before he was the host of the Wheel of Fortune, and he was a Los Angeles-based weatherman. I think I've told this I would, story before. I would love to meet him. And I, and my dad kind of, in my mind, looked like Pat Sajak, and I swear to As you. As a kid, yeah. There was a time when I was watching the weather, and I told my mom, I was 100% 100% convinced that my dad was on television. <laughs> I thought, yeah, yeah, but they make him up a little bit different for television, so it doesn't look quite the same. This was when I was in California. 38, you were 38 years old. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. Um, she used to turn the letters manually. No, she just they would light them. up, and then she would have to walk over there and turn them. And now they light up, and then when she touches them, they change. How do you think she does it? But I, I don't think she does anything. I don't think hold, she, hold, hold I on. think there's just someone who times it. Well, I don't think it's a touch screen. I'm just making that note. But but okay, especially back when she used to turn them, she did it so quickly. If it's a huge phrase, how does she know so quickly what letters to go to? Is she is it is she they, seeing it somewhere else? Is there something? Do they do something that only Vanna can see on the letters? That like Google Glass. Well, I'm not talking about like augmented reality. They definitely didn't have that back in the '80s. They, they, but I'm saying, they, do, they, how do you think she knows? Thelma. And I, I agree. I think oh, they just light they up? lit up and then she would just turn them. Okay, yeah, but now they light up when she touches them. No, they light up. And they light up and then she touches them. Yeah, same thing. Oh, okay, so her job is super easy. Yes, you're, you're kinda. In my mind, you're I giving just her thought, lots of credit. Like, how does she know to do this? I, th I think, I don't wanna, I don't want okay, to. Okay, they just light up. Belittle what she does because she does a lot. She still has a very important she job. She walks and she touches letters that if she didn't, if she wasn't there, they would still be revealed. Right, it's the touch of Vanna. It's the touch of Vanna that, that oh, you say they still would be revealed. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I believe just, that Vanna's touch is what reveals I them. just remembered another game show I'm adding to my, mm, might, might have to go in my top five. No, it can't, it's an honorable mention. Okay, so Wheel of Fortune, did it make your list? Or did you already tell me this? Um, Wheel of Fortune didn't make my list, it's an honorable mention. Mm. If they still had the thing at the end where you could take your winnings and shop, 
Remember that a, like a thing would open and then all of a sudden there'd be all this stuff of price tags. Yeah. And you could shopping shop. Shopping spree, the shopping spree. If you could do the freaking shopping spree. They've, they've honed it down so much that like. Well they've just taken away the shopping spree. You, That's all they've honed. No, in. they also at the end, it's like the, the final puzzle is like R-S-T-L-N-E Mm, let's put those up there. We know you're gonna guess those anyway. For decades, people would just guess those. That's so, called fine tuning. So now, you're like, I mean it was inevitable, you have to do that. But I think someone, if there's someone time traveled from like the van of turning the letters physically days to now, no shopping spree, none of that, they'd be like, they'd be very disappointed. But like, whoa, this is a, this yeah, is. Yeah, that's too much change too fast. You have to slowly evolve a game show to keep that audience. I mean, my parents it's, still watch it it's just every a, night. It's an indictment of us as a society that that it, ha, it has to be so, it has to be so streamlined. Wait, I think you're being too hard on it, Didn't man. make my list. I mean, it's. I would love to meet Pat Sajak and we've said it before, we want, I wanna go on as a duo. Yeah, like the when, fr Friends episode. When they do the Friends episode. Yeah. Rhett and Link, we're friends, we wanna go on Wheel of Fortune. Come on, Pat. Come on, Vanna. I'm sure, Vanna, that you do a lot more than we realize, and we're sorry. I thought that you had a special system it. for selecting the letters, so just so you I know. I bet you do. I bet she's the one writing all the puzzles, by the way. Uh, yeah, and I would love to go on that I show. I will do nothing but positive. I, you will be number one on my list if we get to be on it. Okay. All right, Feldman, this just in. So in order to get the job done right, Vanna is given the answers to the quizzes or the puzzles in advance, so she knows where the letters are located. She's given the But answers. they still light up. Even so, she does remember one time when she turned around the wrong letter and the puzzle had to be thrown out. See? One time, I Vanna remembers turning around up. the wrong letter, and she, but she does know the, the solutions to the puzzles ahead of time. Yeah. Hold on, but She's it's not as simple them. as they just light up, guys. There's something else going on. We're gonna have to watch clips of this. My number five is, a game show that I watched on the USA Network in that time frame as a kid, <laughs> Bumper Stompers. You ever heard of this? Is that when you're trying to do the license plates? Well, you can probably guess, but do you remember it? Yeah, that's what it is. I'm not guessing, I'm I'm trying to remember if that's the right thing. You yes. see it? Okay. It's where they, it's, it's like I didn't the, know if you would've seen it. It's like the vanity plates and you're trying to yeah. figure out what they mean. Yeah, and I couldn't remember who the host was. I looked it up, uh, this is like a Canadian game show that they syndicated, Al Dubois. Oh yeah, old what, Dubois. What a Canadian name. Yeah. Well, it's a French From name. From Montreal. But, uh, Al Dubois. Yeah, I love the bumper stumpers and I always thought, man, I can't, one day I'll be able to get a vanity plate. And then when the time came, I was like, I ain't getting no vanity plate. It's extra. Yeah. It costs extra. It and costs it's extra. extra. <laughs> yeah, and it is extra. Um, I just remember loving it. I mean, I just think it's simple. I think it needs to be recognized more. I think it's something that you play all the time. It's difficult to come up with a good vanity plate in real life, but how much more difficult is it to create an entire game show where it's like, you're making it happen? This your, it was th fun. That's your, actually yeah. your, your, your <laughs> I, I that commend your top five. <laughs> they, turn, they turn vanity plates into an entire game show in and, Canada. Okay, here, okay, first of all, that's a feat, man. Incredibly high play along ability factor. Yeah. So because. And when people are guessing, it's like, it's kind of fun to watch them like try to sound it out. What else happened? I don't remember. I don't At least remember. you could win a car, right? I remember that there were a lot of car sound effects. Hurt, hurt. <laughs> I like sound effects. That's all, I, I don't oh, well, remember, okay. don't gives, ask me anything else about it. That gives me some I don't clues remember. as to what, what else is gonna be on your <laughs> list if you I like did. sound effects. I wanted it to be recognized as my number five. What's your number four? Not bumper stumpers, believe it or not. Uh, Hollywood Squares. Hollywood Squares. Is my number four. Um, we, we, we've ended up talking about Hollywood Squares quite a bit as we've like yep. actually tried to figure out what like a modern day version of Hollywood Squares would be because you had the celebrity factor. And of course, those of you who don't know, Hollywood Squares is essentially tic-tac-toe Two people are playing tic-tac-toe against one another and you are, the way you get a your letter, either X or O on the board is the host asks a celebrity who is in that spot a question and then you have to decide if you're going they, to agree or disagree They answer with the question and then they'll, um, 
Yeah, you have to agree or disagree. And they're and they're either, you know, purposely bullying you. Yeah. Or they are answering it correctly and you have to judge the personality. And of course, for many years, was it Joan Rivers was the middle square? Yeah. Uh, now, which now, is the most important square. I gotta jump in here and say I'm I'm pretty disappointed. Pretty disappointed, why? For a couple of reasons. Okay. I'm disappointed that it's not higher on your list. Oh, and really? I think I think it should be and I think it will be after I, I okay. talk some more about it. All right. But you've also stole my thunder. <laughs> okay. Because that's why I'm also upset. Okay, I'm sorry. This is my number one. Ladies and gentlemen, my number one, stealing my thunder. This is it's your bound number to one? The way we do the system is there's no build up to number one because the chances of the other person putting it lower <laughs> really takes the wind out no, of a reveal. No, that just that just makes it more fun. We get, you know what? It's just you get to the exciting thing earlier. It's like putting the shopping spree at the top of Wheel of Fortune. Well, they should have tried that. Maybe it'd still be on the air. My, <laughs> just kidding. It my is. number one game show is Hollywood Squares. Okay. And I watched I watched this religiously. I'm pretty sure it was on that USA um, situation. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was so, and I didn't realize why until I guess now that I think about it, or when we were talking about it about a year ago, because we were talking about game shows and idea developing ideas for game shows. Honestly, the the comedic factor. The fact that like someone could intentionally try to deceive you or th there's different ways to play it. And some people were just um, celebrities and they were just playing it sincere. Some of them were acting sincere but they were playing you. And some of them, you, you know, the comedians on there like uh, Jim J. Bullock, I don't know who that guy is except that he was on Hollywood Squares. <laughs> He would, you know, you knew he was gonna give a funny answer. Yeah. And and then you weren't supposed to take it seriously. Everybody would laugh. And then he would give his answer that you were gonna agree or disagree with. So th this is something we do on our show. I mean, when we play our like whiteboard games, we talk about, um, well, we kinda know that sometimes we're gonna, we're gonna, sometimes we give funny answers on the whiteboard, sometimes we say funny answers, but then there's a different answer on the whiteboard. Like I was gonna say so and so, and maybe try to get a laugh. Right. All that comes from Hollywood Squares, and that's why I love. Uh, I, I love it. And I, I love. I mean, I, I I love all that stuff about it. I also love. Um, the fact that it was lower pressure for the contestants, like something about me watching. Mm, okay, this is interesting. This is what I wanted to talk about, so go ahead. Yeah, and I, I think I'm just now realizing this. I also love the fact that like, I feel like I could be a contestant on that and not, not just my pants. And this says a lot about our personalities <laughs> because the reason, and I figured that it would be higher on your list. You have if a 50-50 chance. And you know, and I know how to play tic tac toe. The reason that it did not get higher than four on my list is because there's not enough at stake. It's not truly competitive. There's, there's not there's enough no skill. It's not. There's no drama. Like yeah, I now when you get to, when you get to what my number one is, you might be like, well, why why is that your number one? And I'll try to justify it. But the reason Hollywood Square is as great as all those things that you described about it. I are, think I know what it is, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it because I don't want to spoil your number one, which. Well, you might end up spoiling it anyway. Um, I would never the, do the to you what you just is that did to it's me. It's just fun. Yeah, it's, it's just it's only fun. Good X's I, and O's. I don't. Fun. I don't remember any of the contestants. There's no like. Do you remember when Ken Jennings was winning for a month? You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like, there's no opportunity for the contestant to excel in a way that brings the attention back to them. Which, again, as somebody who's super competitive and has yeah. had a life of like. Competing in sports and stuff like that, and try and drawing attention to myself, I naturally kind of lock into that game strategy and like, well, how do you win this? And and how, how do you how are you the victor in this? And Hollywood right. Squares didn't have that. It had the comedy side, which I love, and that's why it's on my top five of all time. But it's not higher because of that. In the resurgence of game shows, um, the primetime game shows, where you talking about like. Um, that what's the Howie Mandel box show? Deal or No Deal. I hope that's not on your list. It isn't. It okay. Is, it is an honorable mention. I it, mean, it's but I, I have a very specific reason why it's not on my list. All right. Again, I'm not going. I'm not going to spoil. But, but what I'll I wait. Think is your I'll wait one, until I get I'm to another say, game show that is mo a modern game show and tell you why it is on my list and why Deal or deal, No Deal is not on the my list. The drama and the stakes and like 
the spotlight and all that stuff from all those primetime shows. The resurgence of game shows in primetime. Is based on that principle. It's based on the principle of drama and co co yeah. co stakes. You can't get a primetime game show that's just fun. It doesn't right. work. Right, right, right. Like they tried to bring back the gong show, which is not on my list, even though I watched that some. Um, and I didn't like that because that was just frivolous. Right. That that was that was basically just like a crazy variety show. Well, I wasn't. Brought, they into brought that. it back with Mike Myers it playing was too a character silly. that it was no too silly. that no one watching network television understood that that was a character. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I don't I don't understand. Wrong it. wrong crowd. Um, what's is it? My turn. It's your turn to say what your number four is. My number four is The Price Is Right. Hmm. Okay. I think The Price Is Right is the longest running game show in history. Can you verify that? Um, at another point in my life, when I was younger and I couldn't be left alone for any amount of time, my mom took me to Miss Dean. Miss Dean Child drove care. a big blue Cadillac that only had two doors, but the doors were so long, it was like you would pull the door handle and as like a grade schooler, she'd pick me up from school, she'd pull the, I'd pull the door handle open and then I would have to walk in like a circular radius in order to, using all my weight to like, push the door open and then get in the back seat with three or four other kids. Is it the longest running game show? Yes, since when? 69. 1972. 1972. 1972. That's the syndicated version. Over the syndicated version. Originally aired on network TV from 56 to 65. 56 is wow. when it originally aired. And that was Bob Barker from the top, I believe. Yes. Um, um, no. No, he says. We should have done some research. Who cares about the research? Who cares? This is all about my it's brain. happening now. Over the summer, when she didn't pick me up from school and I'd have to like walk her door open, mom would just drop me off and I'd be there in the morning, eat a little Rice Krispies with a bunch of uh, sugar added. At Miss Dean's? At Miss Dean's. She added sugar to your Rice Krispies at Miss Dean's? I insisted upon it. Okay. Um, I remember there was a little television situated like right in front of her table where we would where we would eat breakfast and everything and then, but then, it, I mean we watch other stuff but then ultimately Price is Right would come on at ele same time it does now. Yeah. Um, 11 o'clock. Which is interesting that it's, you know, that's it's time slot and that's what you associated with that. Yeah. Watching Price is Right in the late morning but don't watch Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy in the late morning. I love Price is Right. I also think it, it has a heavy influence on Good Mythical Morning um, but what would happen is the reason why it's not higher for me, even though I love it, especially that big wheel, man, that is awesome. Um, and I love Bob Barker, I love his long microphone. At the end of the episode I knew, we were eating lunch, like she would serve lunch at like 11.40 and we would eat like our grilled cheese or whatever and then I knew at the end of the showcase showdown that like, I'm gonna have to take a nap right after this. And that's the reason why it's not higher. She would make <laughs> us take a nap. That seems a little unfair. At noon. To Price is Right. Hold and, on, and was it, it's, so it's an the, hour long show. An hour long show. And at the moment, yeah, you'd have a winner of the first, like first person would spin the wheel and be like, oh, I like that guy, he's gonna come back at the end. And then they'd bring more people up. So at the end when he was like, and remember, have your pet spayed or neutered, I was like, I now I gotta lay down and act like I'm going to sleep. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah, That's the only reason it's not higher. But um, Pavlovian response to Bob Barker's neutering call. The pandemonium when you would like run down, come on down, that was just exciting. Man. Well okay, so it's, it, it's not on my list and it was and I ended up knocking it off uh, to add another one that I, I don't because even know Ms. how Because Miss Dean would make you it. take a nap at noon which yeah, is Dean, cruel. I never even met her. You never met her? I don't think so. Um, I, man, the more I think about it, like it has so many great elements. So just let me just cover them for a second, right? Very funny, quick-witted host. You got the sex appeal of, uh, the models. Uh, of the Barker beauties. There's male models now. Now there's male models, yes, it's 2019, that's, of that's course. great. And, Bring it uh, on. You've got a play along ability. You've got the variety of all the different games. You've got lots of cash and prizes. It's an hour long. You've got the wheel. You've got the showcase showdown. It has like so the, many when elements. When Safe Cracker comes on, you get excited, or of course, Plinko, like, woo! It's like. I honestly think that the reason it didn't make my list is that 
is is the time of day that it comes on that yeah. makes it feel less weighty to the, me. And the commercials really bring you down. Lots of commercials. They're and all also, a, they're, lots of. They're marketed no, towards people who are dying. And also, I mean, honestly, I never. I always found myself being annoyed by the contestants in a way that I was not annoyed. And you know what? Something that Bob Barker didn't. They're do, manic. Yeah, they're, the they're, contestants are manic. And 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 he also, even though he was had a, some a, a lot of dry wit, I feel like. He let, uh, he encouraged a lot of that, whereas other hosts would kind of shut almost, it down. He almost absorbed it as personal adulation. And I don't know if I was jealous, or I, I don't know what it was, but there was something about the whole system that turned me off enough to make me not, because one of the reasons I've, uh, one of the, the criteria for this list is, uh, if I turn the channel to it, which I still do turn the channel sometimes. Oh, I know what's up there for you now. Uh, that you, you watch If it. I land on it, I will keep watching it until it's over. And so The Price is Right is something that I would tune out of. I didn't have to watch it until the end. So yeah. most of the stuff on my list or all the stuff on my list is something that I'll, I will kind of lock into. Drew Carey. Drew Carey's whole career changed. It was a complete career change to then to step into that role. What's your next one? I'd love to bid a dollar though. You know, ju I Justine. She's been on there. She was on there. Of course they cast, they look at everybody in line. I hate to break this to you, but when you stand in line, they, they, they decide who's gonna come up. They cast you based on, they pick people in line. When you're standing in line for prices right, they're interviewing people. Yeah. They're going down the aisle. It's profiling. Going down, they're profiling you, they're interviewing you, and they're bringing you up there. It's like. Oh, uh, you got a social media following? Get up here, girl. Okay. I have, this is my one modern game show. Who wants to be a millionaire? This is, the, okay. This is the one that re was the, was started the new, the, the resurgence of, of game shows in prime time, I believe. Uh, so dramatic. And I am talking about the Regis Philbin version. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, is it? Meredith Vieira? Is it still on? I don't think it is, no. And here's why. Maybe okay. maybe in syndication, but Meredith Vieira took over during the daytime. Okay, so. Maybe at night, I don't know. When it came on. I watched it. The stakes were so high. Yes. You could win a million dollars. Unlike anything that yeah. had ever happened on a game show before. It was nerve wracking. There was a spotlight on this person. They had to call the right person. They had to make the right decisions. They used them in their lifelines. And then you've got this incredibly funny host, you know, you've got that. So it isn't like you have this, like there, there was the weakest link and, and you had that really like uh, British caustic dude. woman. British woman. Uh, and she was, she was very funny, but it was just it all. It was a bit. It was all a bit the whole time. And, and Regis, he just, I, I've always liked him. I always liked Regis. Yeah. And I like the way I he, see a it, lot of your dad in Regis. Right, I, he uh, always, what do we got here? It started it, it, August 16th, 1999. Uh, so anyway. Still in syndication, of course. All in a high playability factor, play along ability factor. And the reason that I that put that on the list is because it has all these elements. The reason I did not put deal or no deal on the list is because that whole thing where they make an offer to you and they like act like the woman up there, the silhouette of the woman and she's on the phone and she's talking to Howie. Yeah. I don't like all that stuff that I know is just all for show. You know what I'm saying? There was something about the simplicity of this person in a chair and these questions and a few different things you could do to get the answer and you either keep going up or you go. It was over sensationalized but it wasn't like a farce. It wasn't a farce and there's a farce in Deal or No Deal <laughs> and also. But I gotta give it to Howie because I really, I really think that he was amazing on that show. I oh, mean, yeah. absolutely. It's an honorable mention like, but it's not in my top five. Yeah, I didn't put it anywhere but I got to give it to how the his like the winking drama that he brought to it. Well, you know, he kind of winked and at Howie it. Howie is a genius at playing into that thing. I, I so good, man. He I he was, I mean, and the fact that like a comedian coming in and doing that, but like the comedy was in how dramatic he was. You know, it was like he actually wasn't in funny in the way you thought he was going to be funny. 
Hmm. It was he was funny in like a in a dramatic way, you know? Yeah, but I think it might be funny for you to watch it because you know that he's acting with these people too. That might not be the way well, every, think, everyone no, of in, course not. interacts with. with the but it worked on that level. So, and, I, and of course he knew that. And so anyway, and I didn't, again, nothing against Meredith. I'm talking about the Regis Philbin version because Regis was funny. He was first. And I just don't, she, she's not, she wasn't trying to be funny. I don't She was recall. just trying to be n- nice. I don't know what she was. You know, I'm staying out of that one. And so, but I'm just saying, she wasn't trying to be funny. Regis is a comedian. And so there's just something about how you need. I think she was funny. You need that voice in there. I don't think she was trying to, <laughs> she wasn't. Was she trying to be funny? Did you watch that? The, there's no, so she's few. She's not a comedian, There's she's so a host. few female uh, game show hosts, like all of that like 70s and 80s bravado stuff, which you know now is almost intolerable. I th- I think it's like so I'll give it to Meredith in terms of like being a champion of like that uh, and of course don't you you're, you're <laughs> trying to make you're trying to make me <laughs> look bad no I'm sorry I know I, I know it you has weren't nothing to you do just with said her. that she wasn't funny to it you has which a, is fine no you're sexist. she's not trying to be funny <laughs> she's not trying to be funny she's a she's an anchor she's a news anchor she's not a comedian so I'm saying that. She was in. You need a a comedian in that role to make the give the full package for that show. In my mind, once you got rid of that, it was like I'm not interested anymore. My number three. I might be stealing your number one here. Okay. My number three is Family Feud. That's my number one. That's your number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think it is your number one because. My, I'm saying Family Feud hosted by Richard Dawson. Okay, Family Feud hosted by Richard Dawson was awesome. Family Feud hosted by Ray Combs was awesome. I don't know Family about that. Family Feud hosted by the guy who was the beard on Home Improvement. That's not. Not good. That's, the, that's an improper use of the term. <laughs> the bearded guy. <laughs> the bearded guy is better. But, and then Steve freaking Harvey? Steve Harvey is amazing. The reason that this is my number one is because it has stood the test of time. Yeah. And it also has stood the test of the internet. Family Feud, unlike any other game show, creates amazing fodder for tantalizing internet compilations yeah. of answers and responses it's from great. the host. And it's just always fun. It's it's fun, but it's but you're not just getting it from professional comedians like you do on Hollywood Squares. You're getting it from normal people really racking their brains to come up with what three people out of a hundred said. Like right. that's when it gets interesting. Do you believe that by the way? Do you believe they're actually going out and they're asking a hundred people stuff? There, there, there are th- people that do surveys, man. I think sometimes those people who they ask are writers. Well, sure. That's what I believe. And it doesn't matter. Yeah, because it just says 100 people. It's just a, yeah, they rack their brains and they trap them in these places where they have to say embarrassing, sexually charged Well, and they've, in the last things. decade or so, they really have leaned into the innuendo. Like yeah. that's and, and they're actually doing it for the internet clips. In fact, sometimes Steve Harvey will be like, "You're gonna be on YouTube," you know. Said so like he he, he, he says it. it on the on 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 the and he's uh, great. The way that he he is great, man. That's his that's his place. That's his calling. And there's just something about the group. This is a, another thing. The group effect, like you, you, you got to come as a family. So you have to like bring the weird brother, or the weird <laughs> uncle. Like you, you have to. You got to have five people. The and you freaking, put, the and you freaking put the weird Kardashians one, went on there. You with put Kanye. the weird one down at the end. Did you that know really saying? happen? Yes, it did. That's cr- I can't even believe that happened. It's the be- it's the best game show, man. When Snoop was on there, oh, that's a clip you can keep watching. Yeah, exactly. So it's un- so great. Unlike Kanye and the Kardashians go on Wheel of Fortune, I mean, you can't really, I guess. I, I mean, think Kim, they went on more than one. Kim and Kanye could go on together, but there's a reason that celebrities are clamoring. In- and I add myself to that list of people who I want to go on that freaking show. Um, Let's face off. My got, family is families? your family. Okay. Yeah. You got one extra. No. 
I don't. I need an extra. I've only got four people in my family to bring the dog. Um, you're gonna have to bring somebody. So anyway, weird. it's you it, have to bring somebody again. Weird. It passes the test of if it's on, I'm gonna watch it, and I think it it depends so much on. I'm not gonna seek it out, but if it's on, I'll watch it. No, it's yeah, that, that, that good. No, but that's but that's you flip through and you find you find something. I was at a restaurant. I'll seek it out on YouTube. I was at a restaurant recently, in uh when we were skiing and like this restaurant was playing the family feud, I was like, this right, they, they gotta figure it yeah. out. I don't wanna see necessarily like the latest baseball game. Show me family feud, man. And it's so, like the host has, this is another reason I like it, is that I always secretly wanted to be a game show host and see and like see myself in that, mm. in that role and I see the way somebody like Steve Harvey does it and I'm just like, mm, that's, that's it. He's got it, he's doing it. He, the way he's interacting with these people, it's perfect. And so I, I kinda, I love watching that process happen. Family Feud, FF, number one. I love the way that those answers used to turn manually. It was very satisfying. What do they do now? It's just screen. Boring. Boop. It used to go ding and turn over. Yeah, like they were, it was very satisfying the way it would work. All right, so you, I need your number, th number no, we three. Need, oh. My, Number two. You need my number two. Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Now, um, why you like Jeopardy? Jeopardy's not on my list, it's not on my honorable mentions, but it is a state, whenever I go to nannies, they would always be watching it. I mean, there's so many people that are that watch it. For completely different reasons, obviously. It's, what do you mean obviously? It's just completely different than Family, family oh, Feud. Oh, oh. It is so dry. Yes. It is just smart people. You have to be very smart to qualify to be on Jeopardy. You can, you can't just there's no you don't just pay a fee or something. You have to pass a test. But why to be on Jeopardy? I, is, I knew one guy who was almost on. But I haven't known anybody who's on. There was a rumor for a long time that my granddad was going to be on Jeopardy. I remember that back when I was a kid. It was like Grandpa McLaughlin is going to He's he's gonna be on Jeopardy. He might be on Jeopardy. I was like, okay, cool. I didn't like it as a kid. What? Why? I don't understand the broad appeal of a show that is so heady. That is the appeal. It's it. I think it's because you get the answers just as quick right after the question, so it, it, you don't have you don't really play along. Like I remember. No, no. The re you the, play along. Hold on. The appeal is trivia. It's the only game that's based on uh, predicting what 100 people are gonna say in a survey to a question is not trivia. But Jeopardy right. is trivia. It's like this category you learned, you about learned, you know, Greek mythology, like, and you're like, oh. You learn fascinating what, what stuff. What do I remember about that? And I think everyone is accessing their knowledge base. And I think there's just a lot of people that A, like to play along with that to be like, well, how, what, what category would I pick and how much do I know about this and can I get the answer before they get the answer without, you know, in Groundhog Day having seen it a million times. But also, seeing somebody do what a guy like Ken Jennings, and apparently there's a guy that just did it again. I, I, I haven't been watching. Breaking the records of, of, of winnings, yeah. yes. Seeing somebody dominate in that way just because they are just smarter than other people is something that, People like to watch. I like to watch. That's why it's number two. The way that he's winning so much, and this has been done before, is that um, they skip around in categories to keep everybody on their heels, and they try to find the daily, daily doubles double. early, knowing that they're not going to be the low values. And then they they're really smart on what to wager. And you can wager everything you've got and take risks earlier, and really assert acquire a big lead and. If you don't get it right, you can recover because you're still you're still in charge of the game, and everyone's on their heels. Um, and so that's He's kind of a known game. It's a known technique now. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just fascinated with people who aren't like heady thinkers still like to witness trivia answers. It's a different, you know. I I think that's what it teaches me is that like you don't have to be like a reader or like honestly a very thoughtful person to really to to also to really enjoy 
bite-sized trivia. It's a different thing. Well, I, I actually I, think that most people who like it do I, think of themselves as, uh, they, they, they like to, whether they are or they aren't, they are interested in thinking about where they stack up against other people. I think that that's, an appeal, that's the appeal, and I think that's most people. I think most people, when they, again, I think most people are relatively competitive. I think that it's just like, okay, you're gonna ask a question? I'm compelled, my human nature compels me to give you an answer and to try to give you that answer before somebody else does. I was laying in bed, I think I was laying in bed, and this thought popped into my head, I don't know why. Maybe I was reading something on Reddit about Jeopardy, and I was like, unrelated to what I was reading, I was like, why is it formatted that you answer, you don't answer a question, you respond to an answer with a question. So I looked that up, because mm -hmm. I couldn't formulate a guess. I, I couldn't figure out why that would be the case. Did you formulate a question? <laughs> um, so according to the Smithsonian, in 1963, television host and erstwhile actor Merv Griffin was flying back to New York City with his wife, Julian, after a weekend visiting her parents in Michigan. Didn't need to add that, but they did. Merv was looking at notes for a new game show and Julianne asked if it was one of the knowledge-based games she liked. So is it a trivia game? Um, uh, he said, since the $64,000 question, the network won't let you do those anymore, he said. Uh, the rigging scandals in the 1950s, like that, that movie Quiz Show, yeah. which is a very good movie. Uh, um, the scandals had killed off American quiz shows seemingly for good. And he said, they suspect you of giving them the answers. And she said something to the effect of, well, why don't you give them the answers and people make up the questions? And he's like thinking about it. He's like, okay, the answer is 5,280. And he thought for a moment, the question is, how many feet in a mile? And then he's like, the answer is 79 wistful vista. And then the response was, where did Fibber McGee and Molly live? I don't know who Fibber McGee is. This, this is in 1963. Yeah. <laughs> um, those two simple questions changed TV history. So there you have it. It was just a, it was just a simple response, but it was such a, it was a hook. And then I'm like thinking, well, if you give an answer, it could you could ask multiple questions to get that answer. So then I'm realizing that you've got to, you also have to satisfy the category. Right. So it, you gotta satisfy the clue and the category. So if it's like, um, there was one that was, uh, Patrick Roy and Hope Solo played this position. And the category was 10, Letter words. Ten letter words? Yeah, and the answer. Goalkeeper, what is goal, what is a goalkeeper? Wrong. What is a goalie? Goalkeeper is 10 letters, but they had the, they said it had to contain the word 10, so the correct answer was goaltender. Oh, it had to contain, oh, that's yeah, great. That's but they great. said that. So um, there's my little trivia wow. associated with Jeopardy, and I mean we. That's we got, great though, what you just did is great. That's what makes it so great. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think. It's again, a mind game, When, when they were brainstorming it on the plane, I don't think they knew the full ramifications. Sometimes you just like, what if what if we give the answer and you have to come up with a question and which, then you play it out. Which ultimately, they're just asking a question and you're giving the answer, but they just reverse the, the sort of the pretense. Now, of course. We gotta talk about Alex. Alex Trebek has yeah. got pancreatic cancer. Um, as of the recording of this. Sending much love to Alex. Uh, Alec. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like send it to the right person. <laughs> Alec, um, he's got pan pancreatic cancer, which of course is like, you know what? Alex, it is Alex. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, <laughs> it's not Alec. <laughs> I thought it's Alec Baldwin. You said I was sending it to the right person, and then you fooled Alex me. Alex Trebek. Yeah, I, don't know, I was I, like. I, I kept thinking. Here's the here's the here's the thing. It is Alex. Here's the thing. Up until literally, like I've never thought that his name was Alec until like a split second, a second ago when you said Alex. <laughs> I've always known him to be you Alex heard, Trebek. I just have a way of making true you made things it sound, sound wrong. <laughs> That's a game show, making true things sound false. Um, 
he's got uh, pancreatic cancer, and which is like you know he, he made not, the, very very low survival rate. He but made a heart wrenching. He made the video, announcement right. video, and they they haven't said who's going to replace him. Because what, well, what's the latest though? Because I don't um, know what the status of his health is right now. I don't know the status of his health, but in terms of, they're not saying who would replace him. I think that you know they're keeping all that under wraps. But um, maybe a guy named Alec. <laughs> I feel like if he has a son, I think his son should do it. And I think that his son should look just like him, but have the mustache that he had in the in the eighties. And we don't know, I mean he could be he could he could beat this illness, uh, but he's I mean, he, he's going to retire at some point sure. regardless. R- rumors are saying that Gail King will replace him. Somehow that name's floating around. What does it say? He signed off for the summer, but he intends on coming back because he's saying, you know, I'm gonna beat this. But then, right. even when he retires, like like you know, we wish we wish Alex the best, and we we believe he can do it. The way, it I, I wouldn't want to host the way that you said it. Somehow tricked my brain into thinking that <laughs> I, it was Alex. That's a, incredible. You have a gift, man. Thank you. Um, well, so we but we've covered we've covered your number. I got to go with my oh, number, your number two. two. Your number two. My number two because Hollywood Squares is my number one. My number two is press your luck. Because no that was whammies. that was my favorite show. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Yeah, that was an honorable mention for me. It was it was it was very manic. Um, Peter Tamarkin was the host, and this guy had the slyest grin. It was like he knew something, and I never figured out what it was, and I couldn't stop watching because I thought maybe I'd figure it out. Like he knew something about life, and it was very amusing to him. Like something about this like weird bemused bravado was just, I don't know, I just thought he was the coolest guy. Tarkin. Tamarkin. Tamarkin. Peter Tamarkin. I, have, um, I can't picture him right now. And they would have, they'd have the animations on the screen where the whammies would come out or the. Yeah, those little uh, the devil looking characters. Devil guys would like come Tasmani- out. Tasmanian devils. It would do different stuff. Um, and we talked on GMM about w- one of our most viewed episodes ever the was cheater. like game show cheaters. And the, the guy on Price is Right who was the cheater, he died recently and that was back in the news. Flanagan sent that to us. Um, I don't know why that video kept getting like tens of millions of views on our channel. It's crazy. People just But like we also talked about cheaters. the guy who cheated on Press Your Luck and like he knew the patterns and could like hit, could time hit, it stop it at the right time. I just like the energy of it. It was just, and they would like they would make the they would make it look like the contestants and the hosts were perched on top of this huge board. Yeah, it was the, the first. They it was the first game show it. that had. I think they did this with uh, bumper stumpers too, if I remember. the The display like of it picture. was like a picture in picture thing. Yeah, it was just it was very interesting. But I basically, it's my number two just because of his Peter Tamarkin's vibe. The animations and just the overall, just the energy. I don't even remember vibe. what the point of the show was. The vibe of the show. It was, what was just the, like. What, what was the point of the show? I don't know. Uh, win money. <laughs> but you were pressing your luck and you were like, I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna yeah, hit you, this thing and yeah, then. You, you would, um, it would, it would build up, the pressure would build up in terms of like, are you gonna lose all this money? Okay, so that's your number two. Yeah. So we're, we're, we don't agree on the number one. You said Hollywood Squares, I, I said Family Feud. Uh, honorable mentions that we didn't mention that you may remember Street Smarts. Do you remember Street Smarts? This is like that a was early, like on Fox, early two thousands. That seemed trashy to me, but it, I don't remember what it is. It was it, well, it was a, it was a game. There, there was a host, um, can't remember his name, who would go out on the street and do man on the street interviews with people, mm-hmm. and then there was two contestants, and they had to predict if uh, this person was like. Of these three contestants that you just we just introduced you to, like which one of them will know who this is? And they hold up a picture, and it's like Frank Sinatra, and it's just like, okay, which one of these people? Only one of them knew who Frank Sinatra was. Which one was? And so then you pick oh. one of the th- three people, and, so it's profiling, and then they show you, and they say, and just for fun, let's see what Carla said, and she doesn't know who Frank Sinatra is, so she says like the president or something like man that. on the street comedy, so it's making fun of stupid people, which is like what. Now Jimmy Kimmel has turned into like a bit with his man on the street stuff where it's like, what do people know about current politics or whatever. Um, it was very trashy. One of my honorable mentions was Supermarket Sweep. 
I don't know why as a kid I had any business being interested in supermarkets. It's sweet. funny because you were so averse at spending money and have always been, but yet you wanted yeah, to see a, somebody it, else go do it. Uh, oh yeah, wish fulfillment. Like, oh my gosh, if I had a cart in, in a 90 seconds, what would I get? And I think on Nickelodeon there was a show where you would go into like Toys R Us and do the same thing, you go in a toy store. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I would watch the adult version. Supermarket Sweep. Speaking of Nickelodeon, Double Dare was on there. Yeah, Double Dare. I, I did make my top five, but it was it's it, it's it's so iconic. My honorable mention was Fun House, the Fox Television show rip off of Double Dare, with uh, <laughs> the host was had had red hair, and he was he's been he's been the host of other things too. Can you Google the host of Fun House? I never even heard of it. Just picture a ripoff of Double Dare. And that beat Double Dare for you? I think it had bigger obstacle courses that were more like, um, it was more like American Ninja Warrior in some ways, I think in the final. J.D. Roth was the host. Uh, and then I had the Newlywed Show and the Dating Game. Uh, kind of before our time, but so ba yeah. reruns and then those clips pop up a bunch, but it's just one of those things that like endless fodder for uh, compilations. Tic Tac Doe. Never heard of it. Uh, Wink Martindale hosted that. Oh. It was Tic Tac Toe, like Hollywood Squares, but it was um, different in ways I can't remember. But uh, Wink Martindale, he, I mean he hosted a bunch of shows and he was, uh, he was hokey, but I liked him. You got any other honorable mentions? You're no, done? I'm done with my Oh, you're mentions. done? I Shout out to $25,000 Pyramid, Dick Clark. Um, I like that, you'd have, you'd have a celebrity paired. It's a good show. With a, with a contestant and it would be things like, uh, uh, Crystal Ball, um, uh, Magic Eight Ball. Um, round Things. Uh, <laughs> magic Round Things. Um, uh, fortune Teller. Uh, magic Things. Uh, <laughs> We suck at this. Um, uh, a prognosticator, a uh, pass. Prophecy. It was things that predict the future. Things that predict the future. Yeah. And then some people would be really good at it. And Not us. There were some celebrities who, they didn't have anything better to do so they stayed on the show. I can't, and then they would get really good at it. Right, yeah it's good. Have they tried to bring that back, right? I don't know, but they should again. I, I think that's I think that's all of my honorable mentions. Concentration. That was the last one that I added. Um, you would you'd move you'd saw it was like um, a matching game, and you would remove matching panels, and it would reveal a pictograph underneath that that a was like game. a phrase, and you had to solve it. Um, solve the phrase using the pictographs. I love that game for some reason. So that's it. Yeah, those those sort now of we like agree. simple so simple games. So we agree games, on Family Feud. Simple games like that uh, just won't, they, they won't put them on television anymore. Well there's they, a whole they'll, network. They'll put, them in tele, they'll put them on television in Australia, you know, based on yeah. what I, what I yeah, saw what when saw. I was there. Uh, but so there you have it. Um, our top game shows of all times. Let us know, all time, we've only had one time. Go to hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know your favorite game show and tell us why. Maybe you'll change our minds. Maybe you'll remind us of something or give us a reason or a, a piece of trivia that will make us change our top five. And Link, uh, do you have a rec? you have a rec and effect? I do, I, I got a rec and effect. Um, since you're done listening to this podcast, maybe you want another podcast to listen to before Ear Biscuits rolls around next week because you're fully caught up. Um, I'm gonna recommend a podcast where you can listen to my wife talk for an hour. Wow. Um, our good friend Mike has a podcast called Ask Science Mike. I highly recommend his podcast in general, um, but episode 180 called Living, I wrote it down here because I didn't remember exactly. Living with a Brain Injury with Christy Neal, who's my wife. Um, I don't know that I've ever actually shared specifically that um, almost three years ago, Christy suffered uh, a brain injury. She uh, she suffers from post-concussion syndrome 
as a result of a concussion she had almost three years ago, which dramatically changed her life as well as um, had ramifications for us as a family. And um, I invited, you know, we, we've been talking about when was the right time maybe for her to come on the Ear Biscuits and talk about it. Um, but it was, she didn't really, she didn't wanna do it because of the video component, honestly. She wasn't quite ready for that. You mm -hmm. know, she doesn't love being on the videos at this point. But, um, so Ask Science Mike, check that out, episode 180. Uh, especially if you know someone who, who's had a concussion or has suffered from um, an invisible injury that uh, impacts your life, I think there's lots of takeaways and I'm super proud of her uh, for everything she shared. I think it's tremendously power, it can be really powerful to someone who's going through it or know someone who is. So, so check that out. Uh, and I think that's all I have to say about it at this time. I do think that it's uh, at some point, maybe she'll come on here and we can unpack it further. But um, that's a great place to start, so check it out. And with that being said, we will see you again, or you will hear us again, or hear and see us again, however you enjoy this, next week. In the meantime, connect with us. The password is hashtag Ear Biscuits. No whammies! To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 